everyone, I'm Liz Brown Swanson and welcome to Around the Peninsula. Today I'm at Green Hills Memorial Park in Rancho Palos Verdes for the 34th annual Memorial Day observance. This is one of the biggest and most elaborate observances in the country. There are thousands of people here from our community, many veterans, elected leaders, all here to honor the many men and women who have served and died fighting for our country. And now we will share some of the highlights from today's observance. It's actually our 34th consecutive annual Memorial Day observance. We had held it in the past, um, but then there was a time during the Vietnam era where we kind of went away from that because of all the controversy that was going on, but we were so happy to bring that back in 1985. Um, this is my 20th year being involved with this event, my 18th year as the events coordinator, and we have an amazing event planned for everybody. We will have skydivers, we will have a 21-gun salute, taps, uh, soloists, uh, a video that's going to be shown a little bit later during a song called Some Gay Vol by Billy Ray Cyrus, performed by our soloist Laura Savitz, and so much more. Our keynote speaker is Major Scott Husing, and he has uh, over 10 deployments, and he has uh, been in the service for 24 years. He is no, he's retired now, and he is a best-selling author of a book called Echo and Ramadi, and it is one of the deadliest uh, cities that during the Iraq War. Scott, you're the keynote speaker today. First of all, thank you for serving our country. What will be your message? Well, first, it's an honor every day and every year to come out and speak to audiences like this here at Green Hills Memorial Park and to see the turnout today if you look at the crowd behind us thousands of people here today I think the message is always the same is to really understand that the, the power comes through this connection it's, it's not about the flowers and the plaques or the pins that we wear on our lapels it's about the people and these amazing people here that showed up today are emblematic of the best that our young men and women fought for. You're gonna share your story and you've written a book. Give us a little bit about that in your message. Well, I don't talk about the book in the speech, but the book Echo and Ramadi was written to honor not only the Marines and soldiers that fought, but also the sacrifices of our families, our amazing Gold Star families that are still here with us today, that need our support, and all the veterans that came home who are still fighting an unimaginable war through PTSD and to be there for them as well and recognize their service, their loss, their sacrifice. And it's just my privilege and honor to do it. That I'm proud to be an American where at least I know I'm free. And I won't forget the ones who died who gave that right to me. And I gladly stand next to you and defend me still today. Cause there ain't no doubt It is indeed my honor and privilege to represent the city of Rancho Palos Verdes here at the 34th annual Green Hills Memorial Day Observance. On behalf of the entire city council, including Mayor Pro Tem John Cruikshank, Councilwoman Susan Brooks, and Councilman Alec, uh, Eric Alegria, who are all in attendance with us here today, and all of the residents of our spectacular city, welcome one and all, and thank you for sharing in this very special day. One particular quote that has always stood out for me was that of George S. General George S. Patton Jr. during Memorial Day speech. He once said, and I quote, and listen to the words, it is foolish and wrong to mourn the men who died. Rather, we should thank God that such men lived. Now, I understand that George Patton was a tough guy, and I also understand the sentiment he was trying to convey. But strangely enough, and whether appropriate or not, I always thought the general had it wrong. And I thought his quote deserves some modification and revision. With all due respect to the general and acknowledging his service, experience, and expertise in military affairs, I humble, humbly and respectfully offer the following replacement. Here's Jerry DeHovic's quote. It is wise, sensible, and wholly appropriate to mourn the men and women who have died more so, we should always thank God that such men and women have lived. I am humbled, proud, and honored to be doing just that with all of you here today. We will never forget. 
With that, God bless all of you. God bless all whom we honor here today. God bless all those who have served and those that continue to serve and protect us today. God bless the United States of America. We're here with the mayor of Rancho Palos Verdes, Mayor Jerry Dehovic. Of course, first want to start by thanking you for serving our country in the Air Force. You had the privilege of speaking today. Talk about your message and what this day means to you. You know, Liz, thank you um, for thanking me. But uh, yeah, this Memorial Day is very special to me. And as I always say, uh, when I have the opportunity to remember two of my dearest friends at the Air Force Academy, I'm my roommate, Michael Norman Ayotte and one of our dear friends, Randy Roby, both died flying jets for the U.S. Air Force. And uh, it's, it's always very special. They died young, 24 and 29. And uh, it's poignant because I'm here today and all of us are here today. Uh, makes me think on a very personal level. And I know many more than that too, but Memorial Day is special to me, um, being former military. And, and the fact that we honor those that have passed in the service to this country, and there are a lot of people, you just, I think about all the families that are affected, and you talk about the Gold Star families, but over the generations, over the centuries, um, you know, maybe as I'm getting older, I'm internalizing it a lot more. So, you know, my message was simple. I, uh, I tried to keep it a little lighthearted, but I quoted General Patton and kind of corrected him, you know, a, a lieutenant correcting the general, I did it tongue-in-cheek, but there was a message in that that we should remember and we should mourn 
and, and we should acknowledge, along with thanking God, that these people were actually here to help protect us. I've always said this since, since I can remember, and my father told me this, this country is the most benevolent, most giving, most generous country the world has ever known. We're not perfect. We strive for perfection. That's part of being an American. Uh, but but the, the country itself, any, anything that's wrong with America uh, can be fixed with all that's good with America is another quote. So it's, 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 we, are, we are the best. And uh, I, I feel proud that the esprit de corps, there's nothing wrong with patriotism and, and it's great to be patriotic and I believe most Americans are patriotic and love this country. So, For, uh, Young men and women watching, you served and they're thinking about it, what would you say to them? I would say do it. If you're inclined to do it, it's, it's a tough profession. People don't realize freedom isn't free and people sacrifice on a daily basis. I remember uh, when I graduated the academy, my mom was bawling in tears. So it's uh, people sacrifice. So, but if you want to do it, do it. It's a it's a uh, outstanding career path, and and you will be internally fulfilled. This is the 34th. You've been to many of these. Anything that stands out particular? Everyone's special. You know, every one of these is special. The speakers are always special. Scott Husing. You know, I just I sat there in awe. I'm sitting next to a guy that was in you know 60 different theaters and 26 years of service, and you know, you just you just think what must be going through these guys' heads as they're sitting there in combat with. Uh, I just I almost can't even imagine. I was in the military. I was never in combat, and uh, it, that's a that's a different animal. But in my ultimate respect goes out to those individuals. And and what really struck me. Unfortunately, it was the statistics that he used that we've lost almost 7,000 officially in combat, but we've lost 20,000 after combat in our most recent uh, wars. So that, that was a uh, sobering thought, and we, probably, we need to do a lot more there. This is the fourth time I've come here to this event. Uh, first time as Mayor Pro Tem and representing the city of Rancho Palos Verdes. Um, it means a lot to me. The uh, World War II vets that stand up during the event, all the different uh, uh, groups that show their colors, present the colors, um, all the people that have served and have died for the country are certainly is why we're here today, is to memorialize all of them. Um, we owe more than a debt of gratitude for all the people that have served and have lost their lives. And you had family members that served? I did. My father served in the Navy. Uh, he was a little too young during World War II to actually see combat. Uh, he did not die during service. He uh, lived a natural life, full natural life. Um, and my grandfather also served in the Army during World War I, but he did also did not die during service. But um, I'm sure they had many, many fallen friends at that time. What makes you the proudest about being part of America right now? It makes me proud to know that there is diverse uh, thoughts and opinions and that so many people have fought for those diversity of thoughts and opinions um, and it makes me proud that in our community of Rancho Palos Verdes uh, people can speak their minds freely um, live in a free America and um, you know that's what makes me proud and then when I travel across the country you know just seeing the amount of freedom and diversity is amazing. A special day for my family, the community, the nation. Um, I had Several members of my family that served. Uh, the closest one to me was my grandfather who served in the Air Force in World War II. Flew 25 missions as a B-17 bomber uh, over Europe and um, came out and did a, had a great family and contributed to his community after his service. So he, he left us two years ago. I think about him every day. And um, it's quite special to me and to my whole family for that reason at this time, what does it mean to you to be in America and to have the freedoms we have? Oh, oh wow, it, it means everything. This is such a special time for us. Um, we have to continue to be an example for the rest of the world, the international community on how democracy can work effectively. I believe we can be that shining light. Uh, we have had our challenges, but uh, we'll continue to, to push on and I think the service that we're celebrating today for those who pass and contributed their lives to our nation. The best homage we can give to them is what we do and how we look forward to tomorrow and serving out of their image and the values that they serve uh, to protect. Just another beautiful, memorable event to honor and commemorate those who made the ultimate sacrifice.
for this country so that we could be free. Uh, beautiful, uh, I've been here 33 of the 34 years that it's been in um, observance here. And every year, it, it's, well, of course today the weather was absolutely perfect. We've been here on less favorable days, but the speeches were wonderful. The prayer was amazing. I'm very proud of our mayor, Jerry Dehovic. I think he did an honorable job. And uh, just a very overall, I'm, I'm honored that Green Hills is in the city of Rancho Palos Verdes, and I think they make a great contribution to this community. The number of vets that are buried here and just the energy of us being around so many families that have dedicated their lives to serving our country. Talk about that. You've had people that served in your family. Yes, I have. I had an uncle who served in uh, World War II and he died very early on in the uh, uh, Battle of Normandy. So that didn't go so well and my grandmother, you know, it just broke her whole heart and soul for the rest of her life even though she had six children. Um, also, my father-in-law was did not die in battle, but he lived to be a wonderful two-star general in the Air Force, Allison C. Brooks, Major General, and he flew more B-17 and P-51 missions than were allowed. Um, we have just, you know, everywhere around. My nephew here was served in the Colin, served in the U.S. Air Force as well. So we have to remember um, the challenges that our veterans who are still alive today, who lived and survived. Uh, I asked the speaker about PTSD because it is such a real thing. He said he manages to stay very involved, which is what helps to prevent it, which is why all these speaking engagements and all these activities he does help to keep people healthy. And that is so important. <laughs>such a special day and I really am so grateful that Green Hills does this every year so that we do have a chance one day of the year to really spend some time reflecting on those who lost their life uh, in defense of this country. It's different than Veterans Day, it's Memorial Day so we, it really is a, a somber event uh, to, re to remember uh, uh, so many people. During the speaker today brought up the fact how we need to help veterans, especially those that come back with post-traumatic stress, you and your position in the county. What kinds of things do you feel like the county is doing to help vets today? I know one of the worst statistics is that we lose 22 veterans every single day uh, through suicide. And you think here they fought the, the war on the battlefield and they come home and they lose the fight with the battle going on in their, their own souls and, and their minds. One of the things I'm really working on is building housing for veterans, particularly those who um, are currently homeless or have, you know, been homeless. And I think that's the best thing we could do because the thought that we have over 4,000 veterans who are sleeping on our streets every night in Los Angeles County is something that I don't think most of us uh, really feel good about. So I'm trying to build housing for veterans in LA County. We appreciate you working on this, and you've been around this for many years with your dad obviously serving as a supervisor. You said you've been to a lot of these observances. Just reflect back on really what that was like for you. Right, just as a little girl, my dad uh, was very keen on these Memorial Day and Veterans Day events. Of course, he served uh, in the Navy in World War II, so he really raised us to honor and respect uh, the flag and people's service to their country. So many, many, many Many times I would sit as just a little girl uh, on folding chairs uh, at one of my dad's events. Uh, but he, uh, we always put the flag out on our porch uh, every year, both on Veterans Day and Memorial Day and July 4th. That was very important to him. So he really taught my brother and I a great respect and love for the country, for the flag, and for those who served.
Second man formation. No military title. I was too tall for the cockpit, so I never served. But Dennis Lord, former honorary mayor of San Pedro, gas company representative for 30 years, and just love to be part of this program. Dennis, you got to fly over. You said 20 years you've been doing this. Talk about the excitement and the honor. Back when I was the honorary mayor of San Pedro, being a pilot now for 43 years, I uh, started the tradition in 2000 to uh, participate in this event never realizing that 20 years later I'd be doing the same thing. The remembrance of Memorial Day, you know, I've, I've treasured it. I have a story in the family of a soldier that did not come home from World War II. He was a ball turret gunner in a B-17. And when I do the pass, you'll notice my right wing tip tips to the right. And I honor my dear friend who was a former a uh, member of the Air Force Thunderbirds who is buried to my right at the cemetery. My left tip of the wing goes to mom and dad who rest behind me. And the pitch up is to Staff Sergeant James Oakham, the family member who did not come home in World War II. On July 19, 1944, he was shot down over Germany and was not recovered until 1950. I'm a member of Sons and Daughters in Touch and Two Sides Project. Our dads were all killed in Vietnam. And my sister and I lived in the San Pedro area here with my mom. Um, our dad was stationed out of here and shipped out of Long Beach, um, California. We lived on the Fort MacArthur base for a while. But my dad, um, he was a Navy. He was a petty officer, first class and he was um, stationed in the Anzang province of Vietnam. And actually, I've been there twice, once in uh, 2015 and once last year in 2018 to see my dad's crash site. And he was uh, scheduled to come home. It was uh, January 10th when he was due to be home, and he hopped a helicopter on January 8th to translate. So he was Navy embedded with a MACV, uh, Army Special Ops Unit for translation and he hopped to translate and the helicopter was shot down with him and 11 other men um, whose bodies were all recovered and returned to their family and so um, really today is a day that our nation commemorates Memorial Day um, it's definitely not a celebration but um, for us for Gold Star families and that every day is Memorial Day for us and um, we honor and we never forget. Uh, for me, I joined the U.S. Air Force. Um, <clears throat> I'm dating myself. It was 1974. Went in right out of high school. Didn't know what I wanted to do after um, high school. Typical boy, I guess. Average student. And I went in with a guaranteed job to be trained as a jet engine mechanic, which I did. So I served for four years and um, no wars. It was post-Vietnam, so really nothing was going on for me in, in the Air Force especially. But um, I'm proud I served. And it, it um, I'm kind of blessed because it also paid for college, and that was a motivational factor there at that time. And plus, they, trade, they trained me in a job, a skill. And I guess my only claim to fame is in 1977, the Air Force started training women as jet pilots, and I worked on their planes. So I saw that graduating class, the first graduating class at Williams Air Force Base of the Air Force uh, women's jet pilots, the first, one, first group of, they were actually flight nurses, but they all, became pilots and they were jet pilots. This means a lot to you. Your dad served in the military. Uh, he's not here, but talk about just what this day personally means to you. Well, as you mentioned, my father is a Vietnam veteran. He served in the Army. Uh, he unfortunately missed the first year of my brother's life because he was over in Vietnam and then came back in a few years I was born. Uh, because of my father's service and I have family who have served every branch of the military as well as a cousin who is currently still serving in our Air Force, it's just an event that's so near and dear to my heart. I think it's an amazing way to give back to our community, to say our thank yous, People tend to forget what Memorial Day is all about and that we're trying to remind them of that meaning. It's not about barbecues, although a barbecue is always nice, but it's about paying honor and tribute to those who have made the ultimate sacrifice. Here at Green Hills, there are 8,000 flags, American flags, blowing in the wind. Talk about that. Yes, we have 
Over 8,000 American flags that have been placed by our Boys and Girl Scouts of America. They came on this past Saturday, which was uh, May 25th, and roamed the 120-acre cemetery to place flags at the sites of our veterans that are identified with either an emblem or a military uh, saying or branch that's notified on the um, marker in itself. Uh, I can tell you that out of the 107,000 interments here, we have way more than 8,000, but those are only 8,000 that are identified. We'll be marching in and uh, we'll hoist the colors, we'll hoist them down to half staff, and then they'll sing the national anthem and everything, and then we'll march off. We're, we're just happy to be a part of it, you know, get a nice community service pay respects to these veterans. Daniel, thank you for joining us. You'll be playing TAPS. Talk about that. It's a very emotional time for everybody. Yes, it's always an emotional time for me as well, but I've had the opportunity to do this since I was a Boy Scout in uh, New England, and so it's always been a great honor uh, and, of course, beautiful day here to be doing it. I've had the opportunity to do some deployment. I've played for many veterans' funerals as well as uh, funerals of active duty, so I'm fully aware of the significance of it to families as well as the community, and it's a great honor to do my little part. Ready, aim, fire! Ready, aim, fire! Ready, aim, fire! God bless our troops, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Today's Memorial Day observance was patriotic and emotional, and all the people I spoke with today said they can't thank enough the men and women who have served our country, fighting for our freedom. I'm Liz Brown Swanson with RPV TV. Thanks for joining us. Some stood through for the red, white, and blue, and some have to fall. 